Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show now to talk about some NFL news. I've time, five time, I'll do an NBA news here in the same video, so I want to do two separate ones. Let's into it here, so. Uh, multiple NFL teams uh, have inquired about the, this UFL kicker, Jake Bates, uh, after he hit a 64-yard uh, game winner per uh, Tony Paul, 1984, a Detroit news writer. And this was the first field goal Bates has made in a game since, you know, high school, which... Crazy. NFL teams are probably in his DMs like, hey, you want to come kick for us? The NFL and UFL should come to an agreement um, to make it like, a, say, a minor leagues where each team gets an affiliate. I mean, practice squad guys could actually get to play, something like that. And a lot of people would pay attention and tune in if their teams had a minor league affiliate. Give these practice squad guys some t TV time. You never know, the talent could be there. They can be there. But I told y'all, or I didn't tell y'all, I didn't tell y'all, but most people called it where when he made that field goal, many things will probably inquire about him. But I mean, 64 yard is really impressive. 264 yards for plenty of leg room left. He cleared it with hell room in a clutch spot. But yeah, that's a... Uh, First thing here, uh, so, so, uh, former Lions cornerback Cameron Sutton, uh, he has turned himself in at the Orient Road Jail after a warrant, you know, was, uh, issued for his arrest earlier this month. He's facing a charge of domestic battery by strangulation, which is a third-degree felony. So, Cam Cameron Sutton, I guess the only per person that can lock him up is, him, is Cam Sutton himself. Well, at least he's going to jail. So some rumors, uh, Tua's brother, Talia, Ta 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 how do you say his first name, Tagovailoa, the brother of Tui Tagovailoa, reportedly struggled at Maryland's Pro Day, per at Tony Pollan. Uh, he threw for scouts and he's received, uh, tepid reviews. He showed little arm talent, apparently, according to this report, and his deep passes displayed little speed, so not much speed on his deep passes, and even fluttered, according to those on hand. The quarterback, who was not in bias for the combine, did no testing Friday, so doesn't sound good for uh, Talia Tagovailoa if he wants to get drafted, because apparently he threw for the scouts, and they didn't like his arm talent, they didn't like uh, the speed, the little speed on his deep passes. Imagine having a court brother who's already, I won't say a horrible quarterback, but just, I mean, his brother's good, but he made the Pro Bowl and led the league in passing yards. I mean, I mean, I can't really say much about Pro Bowls anymore. Who gives a shit about the Pro Bowl? I don't know. He's good, but his brother's not as good as him. Apparently, he struggled. He's so good in college, like, I don't know how you can struggle on your arm tail. Like, I thought he was good at arm tail in college. Uh, so, trending, hashtag Packers head coach Matt LaFleur, Matt LaFleur, says he was, quote, caught off guard by the Packers adding Josh Jacobs and releasing Aaron Jones. There were some other things in play, obviously, with Aaron Jones, and I don't quite know how everything was going to go. It just happened really fast on that Monday. It happened really fast, so I don't know all the details on that. I'm not involved in those type of conversations. How does the head coach not have any involvement in big decisions like this? I mean, maybe he does, but management lets him play dumb so he can maintain relationships relationships with the players. That could be a, another thing, but you have to know what's going on with your team. But, I mean, I feel like most head coaches don't know. Their job is to coach, not cut and sign players. Not Some teams don't have the coach and GM on even ground. Like, the coach's job is to coach. The coach It's not the coach's job to, to cut and sign players. It just kind of depends on how their GM is. But I mean, if it was me, I would want to know what's going on. If I'm a if I'm a coach, I still want to know what's going on with players being signed, players being cut. I'd still want to know what's going on. So, uh, hashtag Jets defensive lineman John Franklin Myers could be the quote odd man out after the team's trade for Hassan Radic. They use a heavy rotation, Radic McDonald on one side, Jermaine Johnson, JFM on one side. This isn't a report, it's Rich's opinion, and he's usually wrong in this stuff, like, I don't think this is 
Retro website, oh, he, they're going to release him. Or he can be the odd man out. He can play inside and outside. He's going to stay in the team. Uh, rumors, the Vikings quote, specifically like North Carolina quarterback Drake May. The most of the other quarterbacks in the draft, per at Carmick V. From sources I've talked to, the Vikings and the coach Kevin O'Connell in particular, in particular, like Drake May, the former North Carolina quarterback with high floor and tremendous pocket presence. Yeah, I think that'd be way better than getting J.J. McCarthy. Drake May's way better. Um, maybe they could trade up. I feel like they'd have to trade up. I feel maybe the thing with J.J. McCarthy could have been on a smoke screen. I don't know. Uh, rumors. The hashtag Steelers remain interested in free agent wide receiver Tyler Boyd, but aren't prepared to increase their original contract offer. Prep Mark Caboli. They want Boyd, but they want him at that price. They But they want Tyler Boyd. It's just he's probably asking for too much money. Way more than probably they want to offer him. But I feel like they'll get him. I think they'll get him at some point, but if they don't, it's a loaded wide receiver class. He's a wide receiver three, in my opinion. He should really be paid that much. Like, I don't think a team should go out there and overpay. I think if they, if, if they still ask for too much money, you just give a good receiver in the draft because this receiver class is stacked. Uh, Panthers newly signed pass rusher. Jadavion Clowney called 2023 his Kobe Bryant year since he had a career high in sacks with nine and a half. He told ESPN, that was my Kobe Bryant year, the return of the killer. I said Kobe year because I was in Cleveland. A lot of stuff happened my last year. There, a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff happened my last year there when I didn't have my best season. That was very important. Ready for myself because I already knew I could play the game and make plays. I tell people all the time, if I play in 16, 17 games, it's going to look like a Pro Bowl season. And there's no way he said this. Bro, dude is washed. Dude is washed. Like, it's not, like, it's just not that good anymore. He's just, I feel like he's lazy. I don't know if he was ever that good. Uh, Brown's QB, Deshaun Watson, says that his rehab is in a good spot. Uh, GM Andrew Barry said he's on track to return to the start of the 2024 season. The situation's good. We're in a great spot, right where we need to be. We have plenty of time to ramp up the throwing sessions and things like that. But everything's going pretty smooth as long as I'm feeling, as, as long as I'm feeling well. And the doctors and physical therapists and everyone are on the same page. We're in a good spot. Optima tax relief wasn't just one. Oh, maybe this will have a happy ending. Oh, he's, oh, he found the massage parlors again. And uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know if you want, I don't know if Brands fans want Sean Walsh as their quarterback. If he's still, if he's going to play the way he has since he joined the Browns, and he might want to try and get a new quarterback soon. Uh, rumors, the hashtag Jets would, quote, really like to potentially trade down from the number 10 pick to a quarterback needy team, says at Rich Samini. Uh, what they really like is a trade proposal from a quarterback needy team, which would allow them to acquire a top 100 pick. A handful of teams behind them, mostly notable, the Minnesota Vikings, 11, Denver Broncos, 12, and Las Vegas Raiders, 13. Uh, what the fuck is happening? Might be motivated to move up. What quarterback is a team getting at 10? I think Knicks or Penix. Because I think Drake May or J.J. McCarthy will be picked for them. Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, those four will probably be gone before, the, before that 10th pick. But they could be a QB. Well, they're not really a QB team. They have Aaron Rodgers. For all he's coming back this year. So, we had some news yesterday uh, that come out really late. So, apparently, uh, a car that was registered to Chiefs... Uh, Wide receiver Rasheed Rice was involved in a major crash on North Central Expressway in Northeast Dallas. Law enforcement officials uh, say it, um, this happened yesterday, or like uh, late at night, like 2.30. A vehicle come out the news. A vehicle registered to Rice was involved in a crash on North Central Expressway at about 6.20 p.m. Officials told the news. The law enforcement officials were looking for uh, Rice, and it come out. Uh, the details, some details. Um, two drivers in a Corvette and Lamborghini were racing 
when they crashed in Dallas, which caused a six vehicle accident per at Dallas News. Both drivers ran. They call sheet list Rashi Rice at the time could have been the suspected driver, but it showed in a dash cam that it didn't look like he was the driver. It looked like uh, he was in the back seat, but he still fled the incident. Um, but apparently, uh, he has reportedly retained legal counsel yesterday, or about, yeah, about 10 o'clock, and, and he's expected to release a statement, uh, today. But, uh, they call it, but they call him 4K. I mean, yeah, you gotta have a passenger seat in the back seat. There's video of him and others casually walk away from a from multi-vehicle crash. But, yeah, I don't think it was him driving, but he still can't flee, flee, uh, flee the incident like that. Pendeo face for Pendeo face for Rasheed Ross. Per rumors, there is mutual interest between my Dallas Cowboys and Ray Mack's EQL and a potential reunion. Oh boy. Well, if this is Dak's last season, I guess bring back EQL for another year. He, he, we can we can bring him bring him back to be a go on guy. Pre report per Mike Garofalo, the 49ers and star wide receiver Brandon Ayuk aren't close to a contract extension. So he's not agreed to a contract extension yet, but I think they're going to re-sign Brandon Ayuk. I think he's our best receiver. Why would you not bring back your best receiver? A Panthers wide receiver, Adam Thielen says that everything was stacked against rookie quarterback Bryce Young last year. And he's excited for him to have a fresh start in 2024. He said, good morning uh, football. Yeah, well, I'll say this. I mean, I think everything was stacked against him last year, unfortunately. I'm just really excited for him to have a fresh start. And a Bill, you'll have a good coaching staff that's going to be a, put a good plan together to help him be successful and also to be and also to put people around him to be more successful. Yeah, he shouldn't have much help his rookie year. I expect him to have a great, a good, not a great second year, but at least a better second year. Because the Panthers' O line was bad last year, but I think they've improved their offensive line um, through through free agency. Uh, three offensive line starters were on injured reserve last year, which was a big factor. They get them back, and they can, I think um, the, I think um, Bryce Young will be better next year. And I probably not do it. I probably won't do NBA news video because we're only nearly 13 minutes. Still, a few more things I want to talk about here. Um, Michael Pittock Jr. has pre-visit, pre-draft visits, visits scheduled with the Giants, Falcons, Raiders, Broncos, and Steelers. He told ESPN he crushed his pro day and seems like a safe bet to be drafted in round one. I feel like the Giants would be a perfect spot. Uh, honestly, I think he'll be a first round pick since he crushes pro day. He'll be a first round pick. Uh, per your report, Eagles running back Saquon Barkley says he talked with Texans seat quarterback C.J. Stroud and strongly considered signing with Houston before ultimately choosing the Eagles. He said on the hot show. Probably the first team that had my had my first interest was Houston. I got to commute with C.J. and a couple of those boys, but this before but this was before when you could actually put offers on the table and talk to teams. Should have gone to Houston to be honest. I think he made the wrong decision. Uh, Chargers offense coordinator Joe Hort says he's expecting wide receiver Quentin Johnston to, quote, make the jump in his second season. That's what a lot of rookie seasons look like, but he flashed some really impressive traits. And the good thing is when you're looking at the, your roster, you're looking at it all the time. You're watching the film and all the time. Every time you put on the tape, you say, Tell I expect him to make the jump. And now we have the right coaches to help, help him make the jump. Make the jump. Yeah, how about make the catch, Joe? Eagles cornerback James Bradbury didn't have the season that Eagles were expecting, but he's driven to improve, says general manager Howie Roseman. He better improve because one more bad year and it's over for him. But honestly, he's washed at this point. He's not as good as he used to be. New Panthers pass rusher Jadavion Clowney says that he's hoping Stephon Gilmore will join him in, um, Panth- with the Panthers. No one's, bringing, no one's bringing someone in for you, Clowney. This ain't 2014, buddy. Uh, the Eagles, a few days ago, traded star pass rusher Son Reddick to the Jets, and they get a third-round pick that can turn into a second. So they could get a third-round pick that could turn into a second. Um, the Dolphins have reworked retaining Mostert's contract, adding another year to it. Keeps him on the team past 2025 per his agency. And plenty, 
former Patriot six-time Super Bowl champion. Um, Bill Belichick is planning to write a book. Oh, I wonder what's going to be about. Might be about football. Uh, the Jaguars are signing linebacker Foyer Olcom to a three-year contract extension. Very well deserved. Uh, but it's really hard to say here for this NFL. So until next time, I'm out. Peace.